Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about four ways to protect yourself from a stock market crash. If you're interested in stock trading strategies, learning how to trade a bear market, uh, learning how to trade options or futures, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And also be sure to stay till the end of this video when I'm going to be showing you a way to insure your stocks for free, to buy protection on your stocks and not have to uh, pay anything for it. And in many cases, you actually get paid for this. It's a very cool strategy, so you'll want to watch until the end of the video. So the four ways to protect yourself from a stock market crash. The first way would be to make sure you know what you hold. We're 11 years into a bull market. If you're, if you're trading in really big size or you have more money in the stock market than you should, uh, if you're trading on margin or using a lot of leverage, if you're waking up a lot at night, this may be a sign that you're over invested. So the first way to protect yourself, obviously, is maybe to take a little money off the table, move a little bit into cash. Uh, the next three ways are a little more sophisticated. The first one is you want to pay a lot of attention to the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average. So here I, I have a chart of AMD uh, chip maker, advanced micro devices. And you can see it's been in a really nice uptrend. And the way I measure that is the stock itself is trading above the blue line, which is the 50-day moving average. And the blue line is above the 200-day moving average. So if you're worried about a bear market or a stock market crash, one thing to pay attention to is where these two moving averages are, especially the 50-day moving average. So one way to protect yourself would be if this stock, if I'm long AMD and it closes below the 50-day moving average, maybe I'll, I'll exit uh, because the stock's no longer performing quickly, uh, performing uh, uh, correctly. And all bear markets start by stocks and the stock indices moving below the 50-day moving average and then below the 200-day moving average. So you can feel free to trade really any market environment as long as you have a stop loss. You know where your stop loss is, you're trading the right size money, and you're willing to take a stop. And one way to do this is using the 50-day uh, moving average. Now I'm going to show you a more sophisticated way to protect yourself and maybe how to protect a complete portfolio. This will be uh, the third way to protect yourself from a stock market crash. So let's say that we own a thousand shares of AMD right here at the current price, uh, call it 48.90. And so that's a uh, $48,900 position. Now let's say I own a bunch of stocks like this, or even if I just own one like AMD, let's, let's demonstrate how to use uh, e-mini futures, in particular micro e-mini futures to hedge a portfolio like this. So we first have the, these stock index futures, the micro e-mini. And the way these work is that uh, they are based on a basket of stocks, based on the S&P 500. But we can use them to insure individual stocks and insure stock portfolios. And the way these work is each contract is uh, valued, has a notional value of $5 per point. So right now these futures are trading at 32.45, which is roughly where the S&P 500 index is. The value of one point is uh, $5. So if this index moves from 32.45 to 32.46 uh, and we're long the futures, we would make $5. If it moves from 32.45 to 32.44 and we're short the futures, we would make $1. So the notional value, the value of one of these futures contracts is just the point value currently 32.45 times five or 16,225. That's the value of one of these futures contracts. Now, when you trade futures, you don't have to put up the entire notional amount. You put up what's called initial margin. So what we can do is if we're long AMD, we can short an equal number of futures as a rough hedge. Now, the futures we'll be shorting is again the S&P 500, it's a basket of stocks. It's not gonna correspond completely. There's not gonna be complete protection. If you have like uh, 10 or 20 S&P 500 stocks and you wanna insure them, then this hedge will be a little more precise. But let me walk you through how you would do it if you wanted to do it, if you just owned AMD, one way of thinking about this. And again, none of this is investment advice, just sort of showing you the mechanics of how this works. So if we go to Yahoo Finance, we type in AMD, and we scroll down just on this first page to where it says beta, five-year monthly beta. Beta is how the stock moves relative to the S&P 500. So if a stock has a beta of one, that means if the S&P 500 
is up 1%, the stock will probably be up uh, 1% as well. Now, if a stock like AMD has a beta of three, call it 3.09, but we'll just say it's three, what this means is that it's more volatile than the underlying index, than the S&P 500. So if the S&P 500 is up 1% on average, assuming this beta holds, we would expect AMD to be up 3%. If the S&P is down 1%, we would expect AMD to be down 3%, just because it has a higher beta here. Now, again, this is a trailing measurement. It doesn't tell you how it's gonna move in the future, uh, but this is just one way to think about hedging. So because AMD has a beta of 3.00, we need to use three times the dollar amount. Uh, so we have $48,900 worth of AMD at the current price. We're worried about a crash. And so we can't just sell one futures contract. We need to sell, uh, we need to sell three times uh, the amount. So what we would basically do is we would take the, uh, the amount of stock that we have, 48,900, and what we're gonna need to do is buy three times, or I should say sell short three times that amount of futures. So 48,900 times three gives us 146,700. Now we're gonna divide that by the notional amount of each of these contracts, each of these S&P uh, E-mini, or micro E-mini, I should say. So 146,700 divided by 16,225, and that gets us uh, nine contracts. So I should, uh, I should erase that. So basically, if AMD had a beta of one, then we could just sell an equal dollar amount of the futures contracts. But because AMD has a beta of three, it's more volatile, we need to sell three times the amount. So we need to sell an, a notional futures amount of 48,900 times three, which is uh, 146,700. Each contract is worth about 16,200. So this tells us that we need to sell nine contracts. And what that means is assuming the beta holds the same, this will provide a rough hedge uh, to our portfolio. So if AMD, if the S&P is down 1%, we would expect AMD to be down about 3%. And as the, uh, uh, if we, so basically what I'm trying to say is we will be long a thousand shares of AMD and then we will be short nine contracts of the, of the micro E-mini. And so as the stock market moves down, if everything moves down, we'll be losing money on our AMD position but we'll be making money on our short S&P position. And if you want to trade futures, you need to use a, a futures brokerage like Schwab uh, is a good one, TradeStation, Interactive Brokers. So this is, this is definitely a more advanced technique, but this is a way to think about it. If you want a very rough hedge, you could always just sell about the notional amount of the stock you own. So instead of selling nine contracts, I could just sell three contracts. I wouldn't have the fullest protection just because AMD will probably move down more than the S&P as a whole if uh, if the past is a prologue to the future. Uh, but that's one way to think about it. So that's the third way to hedge your uh, hedge your portfolio against a stock market crash. And you know, if you had a, um, let's say you had a uh, 100 and, uh, you know, you, you, you owned a, a basket of blue chip stocks and they had a notional value of, I'm gonna make the numbers really easy here, 162,000, uh, 250. Let's say that this is, you owned like 10 or 20 S&P stocks that had this notional value. And so because you have a basket of big, uh, of large cap stocks, they're going to move roughly like the S&P. So in that case, we would just sell uh, 10 contracts to hedge ourselves. We would short 10 contracts of the micro E-mini. And that's basically the way I'm getting that is I'm just taking 162,250 divided by the value of one uh, futures contract. And that's because a basket of stocks will have a beta of one. So that's the third way to protect yourself against a stock market crash. Finally, I want to talk about a free way to insure yourself. So here we have AMD currently trading at 48.90. And if we 
what the first thing we could do is we could buy some puts on s and on uh, amd now if we want to buy we go out to the march 20 2020 puts we want to buy the 48 puts which are the next strike price below you can see here that those puts will cost us three dollars and 68 cents uh, three dollars and 60 cents a piece so if we own 100 shares we'll make the math really easy here if you own 100 shares of amd then you'll want to buy one put contract for each hundred shares and so if the put contract costs three dollars and sixty cents that will cost us 3.66 times 100 is the multiplier. So each put option will cost $360. Now this is not this is not cheap. This is just two months worth of insurance. We're sort of at the end of January here. This would be through the middle of March. And um, so that's a problem with buying puts. They can be expensive. And if the stock market doesn't crash or AMD doesn't crash right away, uh, you will lose you will lose this premium. This is the most you can lose. But there's a clever thing called a collar, which is a way of funding a short position like this. So let me show you how that works. What we would do is we would sell the puts. I'm sorry, we would buy the puts, the 48 puts. So stocks at 48.90, we can go to the strike price right below that. And so we will be protected if the stock goes below 48. We'll lose a little money as it goes from 48.90 down to 48. But if it goes, if the stock goes to zero, uh, these put options will be worth $48 a piece. And so we'll essentially uh, be protected. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fund that position. So we're not worried about a stock market rally right now, let's say, and we're just worried about protecting ourselves. So we're willing to give up a little bit of upside. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sell the March 20 calls at, a, at the next strike price higher. So the stock's currently at 48.90. We're going to sell the 49 calls. And when you sell a call, you receive premium up front. And so this is a, a negative number here, $4.15, but that actually means that we're getting money put into our account. So we're paying $3.60 $3 for one put. And then we're selling one call to fund the position and we're collecting $4.15 from that. So what this means is that we're actually gonna get a credit in our account of 55 cents. If you, multi if you multiply that by 100, which is a multiplier per contract, you get $55. So the neat thing about this kind of collar is we are getting paid $55. Uh, uh, Robinhood doesn't charge a commission, but we're gonna get a $55 credit into our account, and we're gonna be completely protected if AMD goes below 48. Now, what are we giving up uh, by way of uh, 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 in exchange, we're giving up any upside above 49. So if the stock goes above 49, this is a little bit, this piece here where we're long the stock and short the call is a little bit like a covered call. It is a covered call. And so the stock will be taken away from us at 40. So if AMD rallies a lot in the next two months, uh, this is not a position we want to have. We'll be giving up that upside. But what we're basically doing is saying, well, we don't think, you know, there's this coronavirus and in China and there's uh, you know whatever election news blah 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 we think the stock market's going down and so we're willing to give up that upside in exchange for funding these puts so that's called a collar uh, it's a really nice way of protecting an individual stock and this is a strategy a lot of wealthy people use when they they're unable to sell a stock uh, but they want to sort of hedge their position and what they will do is especially if it's like pre IPO lockup or something they'll do a collar on their stock and then they'll borrow money against the stock because the stock is um, sort of completely trapped within that range and is hedged. And banks will actually issue loans against this. So that's sort of a sort of a bonus tip there. Now, if you've watched this far, I would suggest that you check out some of my courses. If you want to go a little bit deeper and you want to uh, learn how to trade options, how to trade futures, and uh, especially learn to trade stocks like a pro. Uh, is an excellent one, learn to trade options, and also bear market trading strategies. If you like my teaching style, uh, you can go in here, click on any of these, see the, uh, see the curriculum. Now normally 30 day access to all of these courses, and again, when you join, you get all of these courses. Make money with IPOs, swing trading with options, etc. Normally $125 tuition for 30 days access. Uh, but I'm going to give you a special deal today. If you click in the description notes below, it'll take you to this page, and then you just click right here where it says get it now. It'll take you to this page, and you click right here where it says have a coupon code. And if you just type in YT90, 
I'm sorry, YT99, and click Update. That will lower the, uh, the, the monthly tuition from $125 to just $99 for 30 days. Now you can sign up, pay the $99, watch all the courses, and cancel before the end of 30 days. And uh, you won't be charged again. There are no long-term contracts or anything like that. So be sure to check that out if that interests you. If you have any questions about anything I covered in this video, I know some of these complex these uh, concepts are a little bit complex, especially for beginning traders. Uh, ask me a question in the notes below. I'd be happy to answer it. And be sure to hit that subscribe and like button if you haven't done so already. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.